A few days ago, a phenomenal record was set by console speedrunner Mouse. He beat the game in 13 minutes and 4 seconds, crushing every other random seed glitchless run by over 5 minutes. And if you aren't sure what random seed glitchless is, I have a video on the category, so make sure to check that out. He got a 1304. Now, at the time of running, the closest competitor on any version, on any edition, on any device of Minecraft was 17 minutes 30 seconds, and he got 13 minutes. We're going to be looking over how he did this, and what he did well, what could have been done better, and we're also going to be taking a look at why nobody noticed that this happened. Alright then. So you see here he's creating a new world, changes it to easy, turns off starting map, turns down simulation distance, shows his coordinates, and turns off multiplayer. So it, he, to show he's like not cheating. And now he has created his world. Um, Many speedrunners do this, changing it to easy. It's not considered as cheating, so it's allowed in glitchless runs. As you can see, his world is generating right here. And let's pause. So you can see he spawns partially into a f flower forest biome and you can see flat land which is good because there could be a village if you look here you can see the top of a village house now that is exactly what you want and it is an oak village which is one of the three villages which has hay bales which is a pretty good source of food so he notices that of course kind of obvious um in bedrock the timer starts when you move and not when you spawn so, he has a little bit of time there to take a look at his surroundings. And now he's going to go for this house right over here. And this run goes from pretty good to insane very, very fast. His luck is really, really great in this run. So he decides to get four oak logs. And what he's going to do here, it's, you can see it's a little slow, but he's going to craft it into sticks. And from there into the wooden pickaxe. And he's going to mine three cobblestone upgrade to a cobblestone or just stone pickaxe. And he's mining part of the house. You can see he's grabbing some pieces. And also gets the bed, I'll tell you, you'll understand why later. Now, let's pause. Let's take a look at the surroundings. Once again, you see we have some pretty rare biomes over here, actually. We have a for flower forest and a tall birch biome, which is actually pretty rare. And over here we have our village house, but here we have a little bit of red, and that red can only mean one thing, a ruined portal. Now, these were added in 1.16, and you can clearly see back here that there is a ruined portal, and he does go for it. Now he's going to just mine this chest with his axe. And sadly, the portal isn't completable, which means you couldn't turn it into an actual nether portal. And now, here, let's slow it down. This is a part that, if he wasn't paying attention to the ocean, you would not have gone very well on this run. But if, while you're getting out of water, there is a small period where underwater actually looks like there's no water and above water looks like there is water. And down here you can see some bricks and that means a stronghold, which is where he finds end portal, end portal and in there there's also gonna be lava. So he sees it, you can see he sees it, he even looks towards it, yeah. He realizes that's there, and that makes this seed go from already pretty good um, to very, very good. And now he is looking around and mining 
beds, which is nice. And now he's going to take his opportunity and kill the iron golem. And the way this works is you want to, ooh, that's not good, but you want to make a three block pillar in flat land. Here he tried to make it next to a ledge so that golem could have gone there and knocked him off. But if you make it onto a three block um, like pillar, you're fine. Now, iron golems are going to drop between three and five iron. And he already has flint and steel here. So if he gets three, he's fine, because you want a bucket and flint and steel, at least. But since he has flint and steel, what do you do with that extra piece of iron? Well, normally you make a shield, which is one thing that he doesn't do in this run. Um, he could have saved some time, definitely brought it under the 13 minute mark if he had um, used a shield. But this isn't about what he doesn't do, it's about what he does do. And what he does do is he needs a little bit of food. So let's see if there's some here. There's some bread, but that isn't enough. Seems like this village didn't actually happen to have any hay bales. So he's going to grab a water bucket and eat some of the bread. And now he's going to have to find a way to get some more food for later in the run. Now, already he, this run is on a good pace. He's in a village. He's ready to go to a stronghold, which is a big thing. In Bedrock Edition, you can see um, they can spawn pretty close. But in Java Edition, you, it has to be at least 1,600 blocks away, the newer versions. So it's definitely an advantage in this situation. And you can see it. He chooses to get food by um, burning cows, which will drop the cooked meat. And I think five is definitely enough. Now, he knows this This is down here, so he goes towards it. And you can also see that there's a drowned with a trident, which doesn't look great. Doesn't look great. You can see it hits him once, um, but luckily he does manage to get down. And now it is pretty dark. You can't see a ton. Um, you actually can barely see anything. But if he can probably see more on his device, and he is in to a like book library kind of place in the stronghold. Now, why is he here? Well, you're going to need three beds for later, and he only grabbed two. I think he realized that. So he's going to want to um, make another one with wool, and you can make uh, wool out of string. So he grabs the perfect amount of string here. Makes it into wool, makes it into a bed, and right here would have been the perfect time to make a shield, but he does not. Which, I mean, it's fine. Like, I may have made that mistake, too. Um, there's obviously something behind there, and he's just going to be exploring for the portal room, which, it, it, it can be important in a run, um, whether you get a portal room. And this ender pearl is going to be really important for him. Looking around, um, ooh, a zombie, that's not very good. And once again, it's a little dark, but keep in mind he can see better. And there it is, that's the portal room. That is a very, very fast portal room, relatively good. Stronghold layout. Uh, so now, you can see an advantage, a disadvantage of playing on console is, it is pretty hard to go across and get the lava. And by the way, if you're wondering how he made the portal, um, when running water hits solid lava, it will create obsidian, which is what you need for the portal. And building it like this with lava buckets and water buckets is quite a bit faster than making a diamond pickaxe and mining the obsidian by hand and then placing it down. Um, a little bug there. But he's in the nether. If he can get a good nether, I mean, the pace is very good. If he can get a good nether, um, like, he's just ready. As soon as he gets back, he can just fight the dragon. So he gets some lava bucket for something later. And you can see he marks his coordinates. So if he gets lost or if he has to go far away, um, he can come back. Now, in this version, um, nether, the nether can break, make or break a lot of runs. And if you don't have a good nether, no matter how everything else is, it will mess you up. Now, 
he seems to have his mind made up about where he's going to go, but first he has to deal with these skeletons. Now, this isn't a good combo. Um, they're shooting at him from different heights, and it's very hard to get near them. But he does manage to do that, and he's going to ender pearl over here. Why? Well, you can see this is a crimson biome. You can tell by the red trees. And there are two things you need in the nether. A lot of ender pearls and a lot of blaze rods. Blaze rods come from nether fortresses, but you might as well get one and go for ender pearls. And then maybe if he gets lucky, there could be a fortress somewhere around. And this is where you're going to get ender pearls by trading with piglins, which tend to spawn in those areas. So in the warped biomes. So now you can see he has to fight with another skeleton. Um, so far, all the skeletons he's killed has give him has given him arrows, um, and he's just gonna mine some gold for trading or bartering <laughs> with piglins for ender pearls. Um, you can see he's just mining. Uh, these drop golden nuggets, and every nine nuggets makes one gold ingot, which is what you trade with. So, for example, right now he has enough to make um, three ingots, which is nowhere near um, a lot. Um, you need really good luck. Even if you have a ton, it's very um, luck-based. And more skeletons behind him, but it looks like he's outrun them and is going for more gold. Now, it's pretty inefficient to get gold from... Just mining, like, uh, nuggets. And you can see the skeletons are now fighting. Why he, or is he killing so many, you may ask? Well, it's for a bow. And you can see right here, he doesn't get one. <laughs> or does he? Nope, he doesn't get one. But you do, will need a bow at some point. Or something later, you'll see. And... That was close, close running with the hoglin, but he manages to get out of there. You can't see it. And over here, he, there is a fortress, so he does manage to run into one. That is pretty lucky. Right now, the um, world is looking very good. As the, Like, this is random. And the pace is very, very good right now. It's a shame there's no timer. You can't really see exactly when. But I guess he's around... Um, I'd say he's about, like... Seven minutes into the run, maybe eight, somewhere in between. But he is doing very well in the paces. Like eight minutes into the nether, you already have started trading and you have your, you're going for blaze rods. Now, this is somewhere where a shield really would have helped. You can see that would have really brought down the time. But nonetheless, this is going well, it seems. And it, it's it's going well. It really is. So you can see he's mining the floor out from the blaze spawner, um, which will increase drop rates. And he has a little um, the middle thing he can hide behind the spawner. So he's basically safe in there, and just waiting right now for spawns. And his luck isn't being isn't very good right now. He isn't very lucky at the moment. You can see there's normally a 50% chance of them dropping a blaze rod, but it seems like he doesn't have a ton. And he, one good thing is he knows already how many he's going to need, and he doesn't have to waste any extras on finding the end portal because he's already at it. So he knows how many he needs, which is 11, which is the number of empty, um, empty and portal frames in the portal. So, which is equivalent to six of these, because each one is going to go into two, and five wouldn't be enough. Six times two is twelve, five times two is only ten. So he's going to need six, even if he has an extra. But it's okay, it's okay. And now you can see he gets another one, and there are two wither skeletons coming behind him, and he just manages to grab it and runs. Now he's going to check on his trades. And you can see down here, it looks like he has one bunch of ender pearls, which can be between four and eight, if I'm not mistaken. 
And he has a second bunch. This is very, very lucky. Um, I trade 18 a lot, and even then I can barely get one trade. Getting two from the only eight gold is, is very lucky. It is very, very lucky. And if he messed this up, it wouldn't be good. I bet he's pretty stressed right now. Um, you can see he is getting a little bit luck lucky with the blaze drops. And he just needs one more. Just one more. And where better to look for blazes than the blaze spawner, right? If he goes over, and he gets one, but now he's got wither and he's just got to run. Got to run up, but never mind, not that way, because there is another wither skeleton and that is not looking good. But it's fine, he can just escape from above. And he is, this is very, very insane. Right now he's only 11 minutes in, and he is already ready to fight the ender dragon. This is an unheard of time, eh? Time. Uh, he's ready, like, he literally gotta just make those eyes of ender with the ender pearls and blaze rods. And then, like, wow, he's just gotta fight the dragon, and you're gonna see how he does that. Now here, it's very important to organize your inventory. You can see he's doing that, uh, organizing. And he gets out his uh, stone sword and stone pickaxe in the front, um, has an ender pearl, the 12 eyes of ender. He only needs 11, but sadly that's the best um, you can really do. And he is ready. So he puts his eyes of ender in, of course he's going to have one extra. Portal's lit, throws it away. And now he's going to put his beds into his inventory. Why? You'll see. Crying Obsidian or any other um, blast-resistant block, and some other blocks as well, and he's ready. And this is a very good pace. You can see he does have a golden apple in there, which he doesn't seem to use, but it's he doesn't need it, apparently. And you can see that Ender Pearl really helps because you can teleport with those, and he is pretty far away from the main island but he can get there quickly. So he puts food in his inventory, actually a bow. See that bow came in handy. And the dragon swoops in, now he wants to one cycle it, which means he wants to kill it before it can get out. Most speedrunners in previous versions um, went for killing the crystals, but first of all, he doesn't have the arrows for that. And he's gonna do a strategy with beds, which is known as one cycling. Um, let's see what he does here. So first of all, projectile to the head. It's kind of a bug, but it's allowed in glitchless runs, which will activate triple damage. And then five critical hits, which means jumping hits with a stone or any sword. Five critical hits. Um, places an obsidian to place the beds onto. And then he's going to go build up a tower. And what's the lava bucket going to be used for? Good question. That is placed so that the dragon does not fly away, as dragons will avoid lava. Now is the moment of truth, so he places his lava bucket, nice save there, and then gets one, two, three, perfect kill, and the dragon is dead in 13 minutes and 5 seconds. It's an unbelievable record-breaking time, and that is a very, very, very good run.